just hit record. Okay. All right, welcome back to the Us Anxious Folk podcast. I am here with Michaela from Auckland. Hello, Michaela. Hello. I'm thank so happy you. to be here. Yeah, thank nervous. you for joining me. <laughs> I, don't be nervous. I, um, I did a podcast recently and I was very nervous, but um, oh, yeah. I, now I, at least I know I can just sort of calm myself down at the start. And yeah. I promise with this, you'll you'll know what you're talking about because it's all about your story <laughs> oh yeah definitely know what I'm talking about yeah. <laughs> um so you are in your early 20s 22 yes 22 yeah yeah okay and so um tell me your anxiety story oh my god I would say like I you know I started having panic attacks as a kid and all of that stuff but it really hit a head when I went to intermediate. And so basically uh, when I was 15, I became agoraphobic and then the health anxiety, like just bitch slapped me in the face. (laughs) And that was really chronic. And I guess it was kind of like a toxic cycle because since I was agoraphobic and I had like, you know, I was housebound, I had nothing to focus on. I just, I guess was completely focusing inward and on every single sensation, and just, I was out the gate. I would say I'm, I'm pretty recovered from health anxiety now, but it was a massive part. I, I'd say I struggled with it for like 10 years, really, okay. really bad. Like, um, yeah. Um, like, do you want me to go into like the health anxiety right now or? So where, uh, wherever it starts for you. So I know you said you, you sort of developed agoraphobia um yeah. how how did that come about um you know I still don't know if there was like a root cause or whatever but I just had a like a panic attack one day I think it was because I was getting really badly bullied at school mm-hmm. and I had a panic attack one day and then and I was only 15 at the at this point and I just refused to ever leave the house for a whole year I did not go out I was just so so um petrified and I like at that point my I think I actually have heard you speak about this too like you know when you go through episodes and sometimes it manifests in different ways like Mm -hmm. so the specific agoraphobia episode I had it was like I would gag all the time like Mm -hmm. I would just gag whenever I was anxious and um anytime I tried to leave the house I would have to have like a sick bowl with me because I was just so on edge that I would just like like it was it was really rough um and then fast forward I well I spent the whole year just that's when my health anxiety was chronic like I spent I was calling the doctors every day I was convinced I was um, gonna have a stroke like I was straight up convinced I was googling you know stroke symptoms constantly my whole just world revolved around you know keeping me alive from having a stroke but obviously now I look back on that and go what was I on about (laughs) but um, you know it was so so severe at the time and you know the doctors kept saying to me it's literally just your anxiety and I was like it's not like it's too you know I'm having these like physical symptoms like there's no way that it's a panic attack Mm -hmm. um yeah so I'd say like my stroke fixation went on for about like up to a year Mm -hmm. kind of on and meshed with like heart attack fixation um or like stomach cancer because I you know I thought I had stomach cancer because I was gagging all the time and yeah it was just I was just so convinced that 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 I was gonna die I mean I'm laughing now not funny you know at the time it was the worst uh time of my life you know I, I even remember actually calling the ambulance once I was I was that petrified and they were saying to me like it's, you're literally just having a panic attack and I was like no I'm not you guys just don't stand like it's not this is it this time and yeah you know I feel like it turns into like the boy who cried wolf because you know I was just constantly just saying that to everyone around me like I'm gonna die I'm getting sick and I really wasn't um (laughs) so yeah so anyways I I don't actually know how that kind of phased off. I think I just started slowly doing, I slowly started doing exposure therapy um, and I ended up 
going out and living a pretty normal life for a couple years. Um, and then I got hit with agoraphobia and I was completely housebound for about a year and a half. This was when I was 19 and I've been, and in that year and a half, I then had a really bad health anxiety episode of um, mental illness. Like I, it was, I went down that path of health anxiety. I was completely fixated. I thought I had like autism or schizophrenia or just, it was very bad. And I did the same thing, you know, the researching and just quizzing and YouTube videos and the obsession. Um, and yeah, and then I started therapy and it's yeah it helps quite a bit and I'm slowly getting back out into the world but you know it's really I'd say anxiety disorders are the most isolate one of the most isolating things you can ever experience you know because you it's so hard being really logical and knowing that everything you're saying doesn't really you know make sense like I'm aware that you know I'm like not gonna get sick and die or you know or I'm not gonna go crazy but there's that what well, how would you even explain it like there's that just nitpicking thought you know and and, and feeling that but what if you know but what if but what if mm. yeah <laughs> yeah sorry, sorry I just feel like I just blabbled everything <laughs> no no that's um I can relate to so much of what you said especially yeah that sense of frustration when you were saying um you know you felt like the boy who cried wolf because you do tend to go through that a lot and you feel like you lose trust in yourself and other people don't trust you and you're just overreacting again but it's so hard when your body is like feels like it's on fire and you you can't explain why right yeah I I also went through a and I I didn't actually see much of this spoken about when I was like trying to google it to yeah. feel less um and I went through this really big f- episode I don't know what you'd call it of like being petrified of taking pills like I thought if I took a pill I was going to have an allergic reaction or mm-hmm. like, something bad was going to happen to me like even small things like taking a pain pain medication I was just so scared that like I was going to get like sick or allergic or or something mm-hmm. even though I knew I wouldn't you know and that's always the thing with anxiety disorders is most of the time you know that that is so irrational but you know it's just that like physical symptoms too you know that just come up when you have those thoughts and yeah so that's been something I really struggled with but I have actually heard um a few people I joined like a few um anxiety groups and they also said you know that they've had the medication thing and getting really scared to take medication and stuff and yeah it's just really hard you know because you feel like just uh, you know it's quite embarrassing you know it can mm. I mean it's not be but you feel embarrassed because you're like you know why am I scared of taking a pill or you know mm. why do I think the pill I've had like many times is going to give me an allergic reaction you know yeah. or yeah yeah it's just so silly it's it's hard not to cling to that though and I think your brain does that for a reason it's it's trained itself to to keep you on the lookout and so you can't help but do that (laughs) yeah for sure so with the with the gagging um is would you say that that's sort of what led into the health anxiety because I could imagine that fear of throwing up and that yeah would would, you would want to then look at you know is it a gastric problem is it gastritis or whatever it's called where it you know (laughs) the heartburn sort of situation yeah yeah, I think that definitely started it because like I didn't understand and I and I didn't understand when the doctors were saying to me like this is anxiety is creating this I was like mm-hmm. how can it, you know my anxiety make me gag like what do you mean you're telling me it's a mental problem but why am I gagging you know yeah. what I was just in complete denial that it could be anxiety but yeah I definitely think that was the start of it because it was so physical you know yeah. how how can you start fixating on your physical health when something physical is happening you know for sure so. for sure and and so were there were there things that um they you know doctors and, and healthcare professionals got you to do to help that didn't help were there things that did help 
what what sort of treatments did you did you experience well so I tried medication this was when I was young and and it really didn't mesh well with me so I got off it and honestly sadly I actually didn't receive any help when I was when I went through this like the first episode of it because I think it was because I was so young they kind of must have just thought oh she's going to grow out of it or Mm -hmm. you know which I mean it was like there was no way that I was going out of it at that point I mean I was once the agoraphobia had weaned off I then would go to the doctors every two days like this is how bad it got and I was getting ECGs done Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah so it definitely I didn't receive any mental health treatment at that point but when I was 19 and it started again and I find and then when this COVID stuff happened Mm. because um everything had to go online and with me being agoraphobic I could finally access therapy yeah (laughs) because how is an agoraphobic meant to get to a therapy appointment Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um yeah I finally started receiving treatment and I my therapist got me to just really start questioning my thoughts and you know really I found journaling and actually writing it down and like seeing the words and then also writing like where is the proof like yeah. write down proof that this is actually gonna happen mm-hmm. and after doing it enough times I started realizing like oh god this actually like this actually is not happening you know but when they first offered me treatment I thought there's no way this is gonna work you know mm-hmm. like but yeah I definitely found that helpful the journaling yeah. and yeah I I, ha- yeah. I have to laugh because I I thought the same thing when I was agoraphobic and I got booked into yeah. a CBT therapist and they were like yeah. you know your appointment's going to be here and I'm like okay so how do you expect me to get there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I know, I know, and it's really baffling, eh? Like it'll say on these these counselors' websites that they treat agoraphobia and anxiety disorders, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> how am I meant to, like what? So uh, that that is there is honestly not enough help for agrophobe ag- agrophobics like yeah. it's you know yeah really I, from- I think COVID has has kind of done the best thing for people with agrophobia yeah. like you said in terms of telehealth becoming such a common thing now yeah. makes life a lot easier um, but I guess sure. conversely it also uh, if you're someone dealing with health anxiety would create some more problems as well because there's vaccines there's you know a virus floating around that everyone's trying to avoid and have you found that that stress has been difficult or have you kind of been able Um, to separate that I definitely with the vaccine situation when I got vaccinated I had like a massive panic attack I'm not like afraid of needles or anything like that I was just so so scared that I was going to have a reaction and not because I'm anti-vax but just because I you know it was that just foreign thing going into my body and I was like oh my god am I gonna have a reaction and yeah um, yeah but I didn't thank god I had like a a bit of a you know shit shit few days but you know it was all good but um yeah I haven't found like because we're like where I am like obviously there is quite a bit of you know COVID and Auckland at the moment but it's not really where I am so I haven't actually had to deal with like coming into contact with anyone that has COVID yet but mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna put the shits up me <laughs> like <laughs> that when I, you know yeah but yeah and I think as well you know it obviously has been helpful with you know therapy and things like that but in the same sense it's getting a little bit too easy to do everything online and you know yes. it can kind of make me go oh I won't go out because I can just do it online and it's like no like mm. so yeah it's yeah. a double-edged sword at the moment isn't it yeah I actually saw when you posted about as well and I had the same thing when we went into lockdown mm-hmm. my because like I stopped I couldn't do exposures for quite mm-hmm. a bit and that just really really set me back so I found that really really hard as well and you know it's just so it's like so different when it's someone else saying you can't leave the house like not you you know so yeah yeah, I found that really hard yeah it's it's a whole new challenge as well because it's I I wasn't scared of COVID in terms of leaving the house and catching COVID but I I was um panicked because nobody else was going out and you know there was like this collective tension 
that fed yeah. into my stress <laughs> and yeah, yeah it made things really difficult I guess you know pre-covid we were the ones panicking and nobody else was and then when COVID rolled around everyone was panicking <laughs> it was like yeah Shit. oh wait wait I was gonna say something when no I've lost it I think but yeah just in general I just found that really really frustrating like you know starting to get back out into life again and my uh what's like the word like you know I was focusing outwards again and then when all the COVID stuff happened, like I was stuck you know stuck in the house again turned inward I unfortunately had a setback but um so yeah that sucks not gonna lie yeah I think in terms of the setbacks I know I experienced one as you said um and I know a lot of other people who've experienced agoraphobia had a setback with COVID as well but I wonder if perhaps that's just um you know we might call it a setback but it might just be the way life goes that yeah sometimes there's something stressful yeah. that happens that makes you feel like you're in a dark place again so it's not just yeah. a, it's not a setback it's just the natural progression of living <laughs> I bet so I was gonna say um you know when you know when the lockdown started happening and everyone was like oh my god I can't stand being in the house for a month I thought damn like yeah. try a year try yes. two years yeah <laughs> you know, so that that was actually really interesting to see you know because people were experiencing what we experienced kind of you know yeah so yeah. oh um yeah yeah so I um I was interested in the recovery from agoraphobia because I know you said you did exposure therapy um one question I get asked a lot is sort of the timeline and the process of like what exactly did you do and how long did it take to help uh -huh. um have you found that it's been quite a linear progress or has it sort of I mean obviously with COVID it would have been up and down as you said yeah. um but yeah what's what's it what have you been doing exactly so you know I think and if anyone that is listening to this that has agoraphobia and is like in the darkest place like I know you know how just crippling it is and obviously you do too and you are like in that complete housebound situation you listen to you know things like this and you think oh like I can't do it you know mm -hmm. I could never like you know or I used to think like oh they just got lucky you know mm -hmm. and um you know I'm nowhere near fully recovered but obviously I can leave the house quite a bit now um but it basically started with I just literally I had to just first start going to my car turning the car on you know doing that until the anxiety dropped to like a six out of ten even mm -hmm. five out of ten and then I would you know go turn the car on drive halfway down the street turn the car off sit for a bit you know and it was excruciating when I first started I just you know it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do was to get started yeah. um and then I just very very slowly increased you know the distance day by day by day and um I actually found like and I've actually never heard anyone talking about this but I found like when I first started, because it is so overwhelming when you first start, I found I actually went out really early in the mornings. I got up every morning at like 6 a.m. before the traffic and did and went out a little bit further just so that I didn't have to deal with the traffic and the exposure because that yeah. was just, it was about too much to do together. Mm -hmm. So doing that, that really, really, really helped like a massive, massive amount. Um, yeah and now I'm just um it, because I just went bit by bit by bit you know and I'm still going bit by bit by bit very long way to go but um honestly the only way out is through a and that yes. is the hard <laughs> reality and that's the worst <laughs> yeah and when I used to watch your videos I thought I can't I can't there's got to be another way like I can't but yeah. it's, it's the only way out is through and that is it's it's a bitch slapping reality but mm. you know it's and and like I said I, I'm nowhere near fully recovered you know I, I can get to 
a supermarket now and um you know the dairy is a bakery a gas station you know necessities um but you know there's lots of things that I still need to work on like you know going out and having fun and you know stuff like that but yep. I've definitely come a very long way and ex- I couldn't have done it without exposure therapy like I don't and that is so and that is so rough to say because I know when you're housebound you don't want to hear that you don't want to hear that the only way to get over this is to get out you yeah, know the one <laughs> thing you can't do it's like what <laughs> yeah like I it, yeah um yeah and I just found also like you know pushing myself but not pushing myself to the point where and and I you might get that you'll probably get what I mean like there's me having like a panic attack to really feel like what I'm going through and then there's like if I push myself too far in exposure right honestly feel like I'm having like a borderline crisis because I just can't deal so yeah I push myself enough, but not to the point where I'm way too scared to go back and if I feel like really high anxiety doing something I do it like over and over until the anxiety starts to drop Hmm. yeah that's yeah that's also the biggest thing that I think is so crucial is you've got to do it again and again and the again repetition. yeah for sure yeah. once you know and just be like okay that's yeah. it no yeah yeah it, again and again and in different situations and different days and at different times and really getting used yeah. to your body at all all stages tackling yeah. something I think with with pushing yourself I found that the best way to look at it was in terms of holding your own hand or the, the way you would think about it with a child, um, you know, who's yeah. doing something scary that they don't want to do, but they need to do, you wouldn't push them into it and, and berate them. And, you know, you would hold their hand and you would support them. And so it's, it's finding that balance where you feel like you're going out of your comfort zone, but you're still doing it in a nice way. <laughs> That is so, so true. Yeah. Cause it is really easy, you know, to just bully yourself. I've been, I'm so very bad for that. You know, if if some days, you know, and you probably experience this a lot, but some days you actually can't and that is okay. You can do it again tomorrow. You know what I mean? And that's something I've had to tell myself, like if I absolutely, especially early in recovery, if I absolutely cannot today, I have to do it tomorrow or I have to do it later on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I know don't push myself to the point you know I start crying or you know just really getting worked up because you know it's it's mean yeah <laughs> you know so like I said like nice encouragement is definitely the way to go but that is that is so so hard in yeah the start. finding that sweet spot between like yeah. just give, giving yourself excuses and actually yeah. following through yeah. can be hard <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. I was so bad like that too, eh? especially when I first started with the excuses. Oh my gosh. I yeah. would just anything, anything to get out of it. Like absolutely anything. For sure. I, I was exactly yeah. the same. You know, I was like, it's too early in the morning. Like my tummy's not right. And I <laughs> ate something weird last night and just everything, everything I could think of. Oh my gosh, me too, eh? Like it, honestly, oh, I've got a headache. Oh, yeah. I've got a period. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, like oh my god hey, that's so embarrassing <laughs> yeah no I think we all do it um and with the health anxiety what um what helps you the most with that because for me like I've dealt with it in a sense of being scared about having allergic reactions and that kind of thing but I haven't um I was never worried that I had a severe illness or that um you know, some, something of that sense. So I don't, I don't really know what the process is in terms of helping yourself through that. I definitely think like it's re- it's really, really hard, especially when you're like balls deep in the obsession, you know, yeah. like it's, um, it's really hard. I, the actual, the first thing I actually started doing because I would literally have like a routine of like searching up stroke symptoms searching Mm -hmm. up like just quizzes about like the brain tumors and shit like so bad so I would like tell myself okay today I'm only allowed to look this up three times Mm -hmm. like I can do three times today and that's it Mm -hmm. and then I would do that for like a week and then the next week I was like okay I'm only gonna search this up twice today 
kind of thing and then it just got like less and less um and also like I was saying before the journaling with the questioning my yeah. thoughts and actually because it's so easy to get lost you know in your head but when I was like writing it out and writing out okay this is the scary thought how you know is there proof that actually validates this thought and I would go to you know write oh I feel okay that's not proof you know mm -hmm. just because I feel it doesn't mean it's real so doing that over and over really really helped because I was seeing it in front of me like I've written this so many times and I've never had a stroke you yeah. know I've never had a heart attack um yeah so that that was just really the main things that helped me and you know trying to which I know everyone says this but you know trying to like distract yourself and engage in other things like mm -hmm. it was I didn't realize how much time I was spending fixating on being sick or having an illness or you know, until um until I started doing other things yeah, yeah I've like, got all this free time oh, now <laughs> actually like another life out here like oh yeah. my like, yeah so yeah it's definitely distraction yeah. journaling mm -hmm. and um yeah trying to lower the because Google is literally the worst enemy for health anxiety, obviously. Yeah. It is the worst. I mean, like, yeah, like you can do a quiz on like having a heart attack. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> what the hell? Like, what? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so that was, I had to cut that shit out, eh? That was just really, yeah. really consuming. And YouTube videos, I would just YouTube like symptoms of a stroke. And I would like, it was so bad. I would literally like, like pinch my face because I'm, I'm so educated on strokes I'm like a stroke queen like now but um I would pinch my face to make sure it wasn't numb yeah and you know that my smile wasn't droopy because yeah. when you have a stroke you um even a face stroke so yeah it was it was the the potions I was doing because of it was really bad and I really had to start focusing mm. on in a world because yeah, yeah. So creating yeah. like boundaries, safe, For sure. healthy boundaries around, you know, letting yourself go down that rabbit hole or just doing it for a bit and then moving yes. on to something yeah. else. Yeah. yeah, just gradually less and less. And, you know, because when you start doing the work, you know, to get better, it doesn't feel like you're, gonna, you're getting better until you look back and you're like, shit, that was actually just really gradual. And, you know, look where I am yeah. too from from then you know and it mm -hmm. it really does just naturally start to happen you know the more you do it yeah for sure I, yeah. I love what you said about journaling and um you know when you said I feel that that's not a fact it that just blew my mind <laughs> like it seems so simple but I think that's such a you could apply that to, to any anxieties really. And my, my yeah. partner is an Aquarius and he's very logical and unemotional and it does my head in oh, because I'm very emotional. Yeah. But one of his yeah. favorite sayings is um, facts are not feelings. And I'm like, yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is ruthless, isn't it? It's ruthless when someone says that to you. Yes. Like, oh, like, you know, don't, but it's the harsh reality it is the truth you know just because you feel something does not mean it's real and yes. and when we realized that I was like fuck like <laughs> yeah. oh my well, like God. I've actually experienced so many diseases that weren't actually true just because I felt yeah. them but yeah. that's like, that's well, crazy <laughs> yeah like you know, and it, it can even apply when you're having a panic attack you know oh my god I feel like I'm gonna go crazy well yeah. you just feel like that you yeah. know where's the actual proof that you're gonna go crazy or when have you ever but I know that in the moment it is so different you know yeah, what I mean it's I, hard no, to I, access that yeah definitely For but sure. it is something good to think about you know yeah and probably the more you practice that journaling the the easier that would come ar around naturally for sure for yeah. sure yeah so um what is on the horizon for you I know you obviously want to keep working um on your exposure but what what are your where are you going now <laughs> so I'm studying psychology and I really like why I'm at home <laughs> um <laughs> to 
help people with agoraphobia once I'm recovered because there, I swear there ain't no other better person that could help than someone who has been through it and come out on the other side that is, you know, qualified and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously that, and yeah, I'm just really just focusing on trying to get better. You know, I'm, I'm in that weird phase of like, trying to like kind of rebuild a life after not being in society for so long you know so that's yes. that's quite a weird feeling um yeah and just doing you know first things again like I can't wait I want to go just small things like I want to go volunteer again I want to go like to the movies you know just lots of stuff like yes. that that I have so long so yeah the movies were such a big one for me. I remember saying, I can't wait yeah. to go to the movies again. I just, something so simple, yeah. but for me, I'm like, oh. I know, I know, and it's, yeah, I, I there's so much stuff I just cannot wait to do again. And yeah, I'm really excited. Awesome. I'm, I'm really, um, I can't wait that you're going to be helping people, you know, because yeah. like you said, I, I think you're right. It's that people don't quite understand it in that that way they don't know that in the moment unless they've been through it that it's really hard to access logic and rational thought and I to a therapist once I was having a panic attack and he was you know saying all this shit and I was like how the fuck do you know like how do you know like, <laughs> what I'm no you just know how does the test book not I'm not discrediting because there's amazing therapists out there but it just, it's just different you know when you are talking to someone that actually understands what you're talking about you know and they've lived it and it's just it's such a lovely feeling yeah 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 that's amazing I love that and my last question which I asked to everyone but if you could um give one piece of advice to someone either yourself back in the day or someone struggling a lot with agoraphobia with health anxiety what would that advice be never ever ever fucking give up no matter if you have 20 panic attacks that day you get back up the next day and you try the same thing again no matter what like you can fucking do it that is my <laughs> straight up advice you can fucking do it and there is a massive amount of us all supporting you in in spirit you know we've all been there we're all doing it and you know you're gonna get there no matter what yeah, yeah. I love that I love that so much yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your anxiety story. Um, I will <laughs> I will link Michaela's Instagram, if that's okay with you, um, in the show notes. Uh, and, yeah, I, I'm so happy to have had you. And thank you very much. Thank you.